All right, so before we get started, I want to actually talk about the machine simulator and the easy PLC software. This is the machine simulator. Now I'm going to show you in this video how to edit everything, how to edit the machine, how to go through, and we're going to talk about the code I've made for this actual palletizer. But as we're seeing this, and as we're seeing this running, I wanted to offer this to you. So again, there's a 10% discount. You All you have to do is email me. You get a 10% discount on this actual software. Now, with all that being said, the link will be below to email me, and if you want to, go ahead and do so. Again, I will show a lot of lot more examples on this software as the the as I, I do more machines and build more logic for the machines and stuff like that nature. But in this video, we're going to show you the start from finish on how to edit the machine. So, with all that said, let's go ahead and get done. If you're interested in the Easy PLC software and the the machine emulator, just please feel free to email me. The link will be below. Now, enjoy the video. Alright, in this video what we're going to talk about is the Easy PLC Machine Simulator. Now we're going to go ahead and run a process. Now what I have is I actually have the PLC code already written and this is for the palletizer. So I basically did a palletizer and a state machine. We will talk about that in this actual video. But what I want to actually lead into this video with is showing you the actual palletizer and then editing this very machine how to actually edit the machine the layout so I'm gonna go ahead and start it I'm gonna show you where the piece is actually not in place where we can actually run sufficiently so we're gonna go ahead and go widescreen we're gonna load our driver we're gonna come in here to the very top open drivers I already have this driver pre-done that's the beauty of using PL easy PLC machine simulator is you can save your actual configurations it saves you a load of time so to see that I preloaded this all I have to do now is actually come over here and hit the start driver and exit now at that point come over here now this will start the machine so let me go to ground floor and I'll show you right here we'll go to this command or this actual uh, start stop push button station we're gonna go ahead and hit the start button that's going to load in the process. We're going to come over here, come back to the trip button so we can see exactly what's happening. Now this is again working with my actual process, right? This is working with the Studio 5000 version 31. So I'm going to actually come in here and show you this. Let's go back to here so you can see the whole thing working. I'm going to we're going to have to move this white piece right here. Now why we're going to have to move it is because when it comes in the very first right the boxes move and the very first layer is a straight layer it's going to be actual two boxes and then three pushes now the very next layer the second layer is going to turn the box there's a little kicker that comes out here and it's not going to be in the correct place now why is it not going to be in the correct place is because basically where the box is this, this mount right here is pushing over pushing the boxes too far over you'll see this in just a second now and again we're going to go in and the intent of this video is to show you how to make these edits inside of the actual machine simulator right and that's the important part of it it's also PLC programming getting the machine working but at the same time knowing what to do like what this little piece right here you see it turned it way too much it ended up very good right there but in the actual next one it's going to end up messing up so that's not really reliable so this would be a good push but watch the next one could possibly mess up or even future right this is not very a, a very reliable setup because it's turning the box way too much so how we're going to actually fix this right so this comes in it actually did the boxes pretty well so, but let's come in here and exit this uh, restart the machine and we're going to exit so let me actually exit I should have exited we're going to exit we're going to come in here and we're going to change the way that it is. So the key thing to know here is you have the labels and the names up here. Like this is 05 Palletizer System 2. Okay. So if I go to editor and I go to start. Okay. So we're going to load in that process. Okay. I have my screen smaller so that you can actually see, but I'm going to pop it up full screen, go to file, hit open. I'm going to come into 05. Five palletizer system two. Open that up. This plat, this uh, basically pusher or this uh, side piece of urethane, which is basically what it is. We're going to come in and move the position a little bit. 
Now I'm going to come in and change that right here. I'm going to change it to three. Let it come over here. Okay, so that's that's pretty good. But let's change it a little bit more, and let's change the height a little bit. So let's change the height down a little bit, just like that. We're going to come in here, and then just like I said, it's so easy to use the software. We're just going to save it. We're going to save and then exit the process. Then we're going to come in and reload the machine and have it working, right? So in my actual uh, process, I'm going to go ahead and restart, reset my machine because I did not stop the machine in the very beginning. Um, so there's a couple things that I'm going to toggle off. No big deal. But uh, that was just uh, one, two, one or two things. Everything else will actually reset itself when we first start and the state will be zero. So again, I'll talk about the state machine in just a second. So actually, let's come in here. Let's load our machine. Come over here again. This is 05 Palletizer System 2. Okay, we're going to start it now. This is using that same process, right? So, this is using the process. We're going to come in and we're going to go full screen. We're going to load our driver. We're going to come over here to, to open configuration, load the driver, exit, start, and then we're going to come in here. We can actually hit the process right here, we can hit the start button right here so that comes in and does that there is one thing that I want to do inside of my code and I thought that I put that in here I think I did I think it resets yeah it does everything resets the way it should be so we're going to come in and actually do the trip mechanism again to do the like full view of the machine and I'm going to show you this right here I'm going to stop it and put it on fly so you can see them coming in right here and then we're going to actually watch that second push again. So what I want to actually talk about here is how we influence the machine and how we're going to get it to work better, right? So this again, the first push is going to be two boxes and three pushes. That's going to be done. So we'll have to sit here and actually just basically talk about the, the way the process works. Again, if programming this all together is very challenging and something to, to learn grow and, and get better from right so again just using the easy plc software and i'm using an opc with studio 5000 and this studio 5000 is version 31 and i'm using this on an emulated so everything is emulated and the machine is simulated so with that said you see the box turned a lot better that time see that it didn't overshoot too much and that's a lot more reliable now we could probably adjust it a little bit more but in that whole whole thing this every single box that comes through will be very good right it barely clipped that one which is perfectly fine as long as it turns the box that's the key component right if you worked with a palletizer before you know that uh, you have to move certain things manually to get things to work properly right and again that goes on where your pushes are where everything's are where your turners are where the things are that you are currently working with now again so let's actually talk about this code real quick all right, so let's actually go through and talk about the PLC code. I have this very simple. Okay, so state zero, if it's equal to state state zero and the start button is on, I'm going to reset all my counters. I'm going to then verify that my counters are reset right here. Then I'm going to transition to state one. State one, I'm using the state values. I'm using as 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. There's actually eight states. So we're going to actually come in here. Just keep in mind, I'm just using these as a reference, okay? So if it's equal to 10, it's gonna come in here and run the actual, uh, this is the palletizer rollers, okay? So then it's gonna run the palletizer roller. It's gonna actually create a pallet. Then it's, it's come down here and actually go down. Then it's gonna come down here to state two. If I hit the stop button or the e-stop, it will transition to state zero and reset the machine. So with that said, it's gonna come over here and in state 20, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna run the elevator up and then it's going to make sure, reset a couple of these other features like the side shift, uh, which actual lane it's actually on. And then it's gonna come down here to state three. In state three, it's gonna make sure the elevator again is in the up position. And at this point in time, the elevator is in the up position. It just actually made a full pallet so we're going to talk about the code a little bit more while we're doing this again and then we're going to watch the full palette so in state three which is 
equal to 30, if 30 is equal to the current state, right? And it's gonna come in here in advance. This is the advanced conveyor. This is the conveyor allowing the boxes to come in. And then that's the box signal. That's the photo eye signal, which is right here, right? This is this photo eye right here. All right, so if that photo eye is made, then I'm going to one shot it and come in here and actually I basically made two counters and using two different counters in that uh, situation I'm saying okay by the way if it's a, a straight layer go ahead and use a straight layer counter if it's a side layer like side shifting like flipping the box then it's going ahead and use this counter okay so while that's doing that when the, if the counters are done then I'm going to transition this down to another state and again when that's happened uh, again, I, any given time I can hit a stop button or a stop and reset my whole machine. Now in state four, what we're doing is we're coming in and we're using the pusher. Now the pusher is going to push and again, it does a side shift, uh, basically a side layer or a straight layer. We change the number of pushes based upon what shift it is in, what, what layer it's on, right? And then once the, the actual count, the push count equals whatever the, it could be two or three, depending upon what layer it's on, then we come down here and move to a certain, like if it's done, we move to state five. In this case, what we're doing is we're coming down here looking at the gates and we're gonna open the gates, all right? Now opening the gate is going to basically allow that layer to drop on the pallet properly. And then it's going to descent from that. Now the descent is actually called, it's actually the uh, moving down just one layer type, right? So that's the, the descent command that we're actually gonna use. And then at that point in time, if the layers have all finished, then we're gonna go to the last state. If the layers have not finished and only one layer is you know active, if the, the straight layer is active and the count's done, or if the X side shift active and the count is done, then we're gonna come down here and change our shifts. We can change which layer we're on in state six and state seven. That's where we're determining which layer we're on. Now again, and then state eight comes and then state eight basically elevates the layer or, or takes the uh, elevate the elevator to a bottom command and then runs everything out. At that point in time, we will reset the machine and actually see it. So let's actually see what layer we're on and let's actually trip the whole situation and see what layer we're on okay so we're probably four in if i could say right now and so this was should be the last actually let's come in here and look at the plc code and verify what i said is true we're actually on the last layer so this last layer should push and when it pushes what it's going to do is this last um, actually it's the three boxes the last three boxes come in then it's going to go ahead and exit the actual palletizer and bring in a new pallet now again in a given time I can hit the stop button and have this situation stopped have this machine stopped and isolated and safe right e-stop as well so this drops it comes all the way down this is in state 8 and then it comes out and goes to the actual you know exits the machine and goes to finished product we bring in a new pallet right here and then that comes up and it resumes operation. So this in, Intel comes in and resumes operation because it knows what state it is currently in. Now a lot of people may have the thought pattern of why did you do a uh, palletizer in a state machine type driven thing? Well, the reason I did that is for the simple fact of control. Basically you want to start out the process. Now I could change this to whatever I want or using more complex scenarios or different grades that you would possibly run. But again, when it comes down to it, I wanted to get the machine running from bare bones and actually have real control over each independent function of the machine. That is the best way, in my opinion, to do that with a state machine, whether it be a finite state machine using a structure text or whether it be a state machine that you can just derive from actual ladder logic. Now again, this is a ladder logic example in this code. So I want to actually show you again, a couple of cool things you can actually do with this process. Again, I am using an OPC. So if we go up here, you can see my palletizer OPC is locked. So if you haven't seen the videos where we talked about how to set up that OPC and how to set up your IO drivers, they will be linked below so you can see those as well. 
So please keep in mind that we do have everything that you need to know as far as getting the system working, but this is a lot more complex scenario than what we've been programming so far. So I wanted to show you how this situation, how actually another machine, another example of using Easy PLC's machine simulator showing how that works. Now with that, all this being said, you can see the power tester is fluently working. It is accurately working. There is no problems. And again, if I hit the stop button, it will stop. Now again, so let's go ahead and allow this to finish out, right? And let's just see what we're at. Like, so, and again, if I go to ground level, I can see, but I like to use the trip. It's, it's just a lot better for me. So I can see exactly where it's at and I can get a different viewpoint. So if I swap back and forth between the trip and the fly to get a different viewpoint of where I am at. That's just a better point for me. I mean, you can come down here and use the personal view and I can walk around the machine and actually do that. We'll, we'll do that when we come down to it. So again, what, what layer are we at right now? Okay, so we still actually have some layers to go before we finish out this product. What I'm gonna do is I'll come in and just like any control system, generally on a palletizer, if you stopped it in the wrong spot uh, or if you had a jam or scenario, you would have to clean it out. Now, obviously, with this said, we can pick up these actual boxes with machine simulator and move them and then restart the machine. But again, in this intent of this video is to show you how to make some edits, how to tie everything in, how to go in and use the processes, right? And come in and get everything working. Again, programming, talking about the actual state machine that I derived, that I built from this actual uh, example, I got the scope of work from the IOs. So you can see the IO over here working. See the IO over here? This is the inputs on the right hand side and these are the outputs on the, the uh, left hand side. So all your outputs that you're currently working, you can see this right here, all my outputs that are currently active right now. My inputs are over here on the left hand side or on the right hand side I should say. And you can see every one of these coming on and coming off. So the, you can, the machine simulator shows how to use this. It shows you exactly what's on, what's off, and it, you can use these to make your machine work however you want to, just like you would a real life scenario. So in this environment, we're done. Let's actually stop this. Let's actually come in and hit the stop button. We'll hit the stop button just like this. And again, we come down here and let's go down to the machine floor, get a personal view, and let's come over here, find out where we're at. Let's get the personal view right here and we'll hit exit and then come over here and start the process and you can see that works all right so with all that said I just wanted to show you how all that works and I know this sorry for the long video I know it was uh, a little bit longer than most but again I wanted to show you the code show you everything behind it and show you how to edit the machine right currently the machine is in state zero because the start button is not on and if I were to hit the e-stop too let me show you that if I hit the e-stop right here, this light blinks. Now, how does that light blink? I made some simple logic to make the light blink as far as that goes to indicate that the e-stop scenario has happened with a simple flasher timer. So with all that said, we'll see you guys on the next one.